Hello and welcome to my book zone. Today we'll be reading How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh, the first chapter named Play Nintendo. I'm sweating in my blue overalls as I look at all the obstacles ahead of me. I have three options. One, pound my head on this big block and hope for a star. Two, run and jump over the enemy. Or three, stop on this turtle's head and force him to retract into his shell. No matter which option I go with, the fact remains that the Copa Tropa up ahead is going to stay there. I can't control it or convince that it's actually a ninja star and thus in the wrong game. That's fine. No ninja stars means more pizza for me and I'm Italian so this is all working out. I know the Copa Tropa isn't going to listen to me and therefore I need to control the only thing I can and that's me, Mario. Video games are a great analogy for life. You go through levels, get thrown off by obstacles, and face several enemies. The game will become harder and harder, but it's okay because you become smarter, faster, and more skilled. When playing a video game, you can control a character by making it jump, run, duck, and attack. I mean, that was back in my day when my Super Nintendo controller had two buttons. Today, video game controllers have as many buttons as a keyboard, so who knows what you can do. You can probably press A, Y, Z while twirling your left joystick and your character will sing the national anthem. Either way, the fact remains that your character is the only thing you can control in the game. The enemies will keep coming, the walls will keep shrinking, and the time will keep ticking away. It's your job to navigate your character through a situation you cannot control. That's exactly how you should view life. A boss understands that there are many things in life you have no control over, and it's inefficient to become frustrated by that reality. Not being able to control people and situations doesn't make you powerless, it just means you have to exercise your power in a different way. If you can't control people, then control your reaction to them. If you can't control a situation, then prepare for it. Before I started my career in the entertainment industry, I was the leader of a small dance company if you could even call that, in Toronto. We started up small with only a few dancers specializing in only Indian dance styles. But over time, in true Lily fashion, I wanted to keep growing and expanding our horizons. Since I was little, I have had larger than life ideas. I never wanted to settle for something simple or mediocre, and as a result, when I did things, I wanted them to be the biggest and best things. There were so many other dance teams and companies around and I didn't just want to be another addition to an already long list. I committed my days to transforming the company in the hopes of creating a dance empire that would take over the world. I really thought that was possible. We would be dancing Power Rangers who saved the world, one extended leg and one pointed toe at a time. I decided to convert my basement into a full-blown office. We held auditions for dancers who were skilled in all forms of dances so we could perform hip-hop, classical, and fusion in addition to what we were already doing. I organized photo shots and video shots and other creative marketing techniques. I had so much drive and determination that no injury, financial strain, or competition would steer me off my path. What I couldn't see, however, was the one obstacle that was in front of me the entire time and which caused everything to fall apart, the team itself. I had such big dreams for the company and I was always willing to work for them. Without hesitation, I would pull all-nighters to put together marketing materials, spend money out of my own pocket to invest in what we needed, and drive myself crazy thinking of innovative ways to set ourselves apart. But then, I would arrive at practice and deal with three dancers showing up late, one not showing up at all, and two of them leaving early. Getting people to put in work on events to help our brand was like pulling teeth. We often performed at weddings and thus needed to adhere a professional dress code, yet some dancers would occasionally show up wearing shorts and flip-flops. I would get so frustrated with them because I was putting in so much work for this dream, but the reality of the situation was that the dream was mine, not theirs. I tried for years to control them and make them work for something they didn't care about as much as I did, and it didn't work. My dance company dreams faded away gradually, but the process was hastened by my discovery of YouTube. I remember feeling a new sensation the first time I uploaded a video. I wrote the script, shot it edited it, and released it. 
No one else was involved or required, and the independence was exhilarating. Soon, I developed an even greater drive and passion for my career as Superwoman than I'd had, had previously with my dance team. This time, however, I wasn't trying to control a group of 20 people every time I needed something to get done. The only person I needed to control was the only person I could control, and that was me. Today, of course, I have a team that surrounds me and helps me to build my business, but Lily is still at the root of Superwoman. The success of Superwoman and the failure of my dance team helped me learn a very important lesson. Work with what's in your control. This lesson can be applied to so many situations in our lives. You get frustrated when your parents nag you, so every time they do, you storm out of the room. You can't control your parents, so stop trying. Instead, use that energy to control your reaction the next time they nag you. You might not be able to smash a brick block and find a star that makes you invincible, but you can practice patience and build up a resistance to nagging. If none of that works, you can find the closest green tube and transport yourself out of the conversation. Have you ever played a video game, then lost because you realized that you were looking at the wrong part of the screen the whole time? You were so confused as to why your controller wasn't working, but really, you were just trying to control the wrong character. That's what trying to control people in real life is like. You're often fixated on getting people to behave in accordance with what we want that we forget to focus on ourselves. The best way to stop people from pushing your buttons is to start pushing your own. A, Y, Z, left joystick, O, Canada. That was the end of chapter 1, Play Nintendo on how to be a boss by Lily Sang. If you guys want the chapter 2, conquer your thoughts. Then give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my other videos.